I am sorry about the error on that last video, but let's pick up right where we're at. We were on verse number 17 of Nehemiah chapter number 9, and we were talking about how it says, And they refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon. Now here's the picture of mercy that we see in this. He says, you're a God that's ready to pardon. You're ready to show mercy. You're ready to show patience. You're ready to show long-suffering in the midst of this. He says, thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsakest them not. What a picture that we have of God's patience and long-suffering and mercy here, even after they, God had blessed them, uh, they had forsaken him, uh, they had tried to turn to their own way, but yet God showed great mercy to them, just like he shows an example to you and I today. Verse 18, Yea, when they had made them a molten calf, and said, This is thy God that brought us thee up out of Egypt, and had, and had wrought great provocations, yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness, the pillar, notice it says again, that yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsook us not them in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud appeared not from them, or excuse me, departed not from them uh, by day to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way wherein they should go. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them and wouldst hold us not thy manna from their mouth and gavest them water for their thirst. Yea, forty years did thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. Moreover, thou gavest them kingdoms and nations, and didst divide them into corners, so that they possessed the land of Sihon, and the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. Their children also multipliest thou as the stars of heaven, and broughtest them into the land concerning which thou hast promised to their fathers that they should go in to possess it. Notice how good God is. Verse number 24, we're almost to a close here. It says, so the, children of, so the children went in and possessed the land, and thou subduest before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gavest them into their hands, which their kings and the people of the land, that they might do with them as they would. And they took strong cities and a fat land and possessed houses full of all goods, wells digged, vineyards and olive yards, and fruit trees in abundance, so that they did eat and were filled and became fat and delighted themselves in thy great goodness. Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against thee and cast thy law behind their backs and slew thy prophets, which testified against them to turn them to thee. And they wrought great provocations, the Bible says. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them and in the time of their trouble, when they heard unto thee, or excuse me, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and according to thy manifold mercies, there it is again, your mercies, your patience, your long suffering, your goodness to them, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. But after they had rest, they did evil against thee again before thee. Therefore leftest thou them in the hand of their enemy so that they had the dominion over them. Yet when they returned and cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and many times did thou deliver them according to thy mercies. There it is again, over and over a pattern here. God's goodness, uh, their forsaking him and falling into sin, their confession of their sin, and then God's goodness all over again. And we'll finish with three more verses. Look down at 29, verse 30, verse 31. Thou testifiest against them that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law. Yet they dealt proudly and hearkened not unto thy commands, but sinned against about thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them, and withdrew the shoulder, and hardened their neck, and would not hear. They turned away from you, they hardened their neck. They stiffened themselves up, yet many years didst thou forbear them, and testifiest against them by the Spirit and thy prophets. Yet would they not give ear, therefore gavest thou them into the hand of the people of the lands. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them, nor forsake them, for thou art a gracious and merciful God. What a picture of God's patience to us. 
in really use of the illustration of the children of Israel, how that God was a picture of us, a picture of patience to us, his long suffering, his patience, his mercy to us, and he extends it to us today. It's no different for us today, and aren't we thankful for that? So here's what the, the picture is given, excuse me, to us here in Nehemiah chapter number nine, that God loved and he cared for the Israelites. And when the Israelites disobeyed God, he was still very patient with them. But here's the truth that we have to remember about God's patience. In the end, he had no choice but to discipline them. And sometimes we can be patient with other individuals. Uh, sometimes God is patient with us. But yet we still have to remember there are times when if we can continue to disobey God, uh, God does have to punish us. But when we learn tonight to use the example of God, that we would be patient with other individuals, uh, that we would learn to have some long suffering about us, uh, some mercy about us where we withhold from people maybe what we think they deserve, and uh, learn the pattern of being patient. And so that's our Bible study tonight. Just a quick thought there about the word long suffering and the two meanings that we're patient with people and we're patient in the midst of trials and then using God as an example to us and his patience, even when we do things that we should not do. We're going to close tonight. I hope that Bible study was a blessing to you. We're going to close tonight with prayer. And we're going to ask specifically for the needs of some of the folks in our church here. And then we're also going to ask the Lord for his blessings upon our country and all of those who are affected by this virus, that they can find quick healing from the Lord as well. And so let's bow in a spirit of prayer tonight. And I hope that you've had an opportunity to watch this video. If you have, again, uh, let me know uh, that it was uh, that you were able to watch it and uh, if it was a blessing to you. And we'll try to continue this maybe on Sunday morning. Again, it might be a live stream in that way if we can figure that out. Or it may be uh, this way again here where you can watch a, a delayed uh, version of it. But it'll be at 1045 on Sunday, uh, Lord willing, if we get all that figured out. All right, so let's close in prayer and uh, we'll bring this uh, video and this service to a close. Father, thank you for the opportunity we've had to gather here to, uh, for, for a little while here uh, this, uh, this evening with one another and the opportunity and the privilege that we have because of technology to be able to come together like this in the midst of a time when our service is not able to meet like normal, not able to sing the hymns like we normally do and have our offering like we typically do and have our fellowship like we typically do, but we're thankful that we could still maybe perhaps use technology to watch a video like this and be able to still be able to hear some teaching from God's word tonight and be able to lift these prayer requests that we have up to you tonight as well. We pray for our country in the midst of uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, situation that our country is facing right now. We pray that you, you'd be with those who are affected by this sickness, by this virus. You'd be able to take care of each one, uh, be able to take care of folks in our church who we've been praying for as well. I know we've been praying for Miss Karen and her need right now after the uh, concussion that she had. We pray that you continue to give her healing. Others in our church that are sick, I know we've been praying for Brother Terry. We've been praying for Brenda White. Uh, situations with the individuals that have cancer as well. And I know our church folks remember these needs. I know they've understood these needs. And I know they're probably calling out to you even right now in their homes for these situations. And so I pray you take care of the needs of the folks that we've been praying for here in our church and be able to watch out over our country as well. And so bless each uh, person while they're at home. Lord, if they have a need, I pray that you'd help them to realize that uh, they can reach out to us at our church here, and we'll try to do our very best to help them, especially if there's uh, anyone that's elderly that would have need of that. Uh, you'd be able to help them to understand that we're here to try to help them. And so again, I pray that this video was a blessing. I pray that it was an encouragement to someone. And I pray that we've learned from the Bible study, Lord, the importance and the principle of showing some patience, showing some long suffering, showing some mercy. And we thank you that in your word, uh, you were the greatest example of that our God, our God that we have, our God that we serve, the great example of patience and long suffering and uh, mercy. And so I pray you'd give us a, a good evening uh, now. Uh, keep us safe. And thank you for the opportunity that we've had to uh, use this technology, Lord, to uh, have our service uh, this evening. Pray that it was encouragement to folks in Jesus' name. Amen. That'll bring our service here tonight to a close. And uh, we'll hope that uh, this, blessed, this uh, video can be a blessing to you. Thank you.